The day was like many others for us at this time of year, a beautiful bluebird winter's day. We set out to take the dogs for a ski tour, which we had done a few times already this year with no problems. When we got home, Lenny lay down and had the most scared look on his face I've ever seen. He wouldn't move, eat, or drink. I picked him up, took him to the couch, and just thought he must be really exhausted. A few hours went by, and he still wouldn't move, eat, or drink. At this point, I noticed his heart rate was really high, so we listened with a stethoscope and counted 150 beats per minute, which is high but not crazy high. We called our vet and started a little bit of IV fluids at home because he wasn't drinking. We live really far away from our vet, which is just a small country practice, so the plan was to keep Lenny resting and monitored for the night, and I would take him the hour and a quarter drive over the snowy mountain pass first thing in the morning. I had this on hand from one of our dogs years ago, four years ago. We did home IV on him, so this is left over from that. Poor Lenny. His heart is just a ticking. Hi, Norton. You sitting Hi. with Lenny? Norton came out of his bed from upstairs and came to lay by Lenny. Oh, what a nice boy. What a nice boy. The x-rays of his lung and heart were fairly unremarkable, but his ECG showed that he was in ventricular tachycardia with a rate of 280 beats per minute. There was one option at this point, and that was to try IV lidocaine, which can convert this type of rhythm with no adverse issues. So that's what we were going to do. Immediately after he started to get the lidocaine, his heart rate jumped up to 350 beats per minute, and he was looking way worse. After his second dose of lidocaine, which was about five minutes later, he started to drool and froth at the mouth. His face clenched up really tight, as did his little body, and I honestly thought he was dying. The vet went to grab more lidocaine, so I just leaned down and hugged and kissed him. I told him that I loved him and that I was so sorry. And then boom, I heard his heart rate change on the ECG. And just like that, his rate came down to 120 beats per minute. It was still an abnormal rhythm for the most part, but this would buy me the time that I needed to rush Lenny down to the United States Washington State University Vet Teaching Hospital in Pullman, which, is, which took me about five, six hours to get down there. He spent a night in the ICU and long story short, his heart converted to a normal rhythm with medications, and he was discharged. Multiple tests were done on Lenny, and they found a whole bunch of things and a handful of heart problems, and they're unsure why he has these heart problems and what caused this event. They are suspecting Chagas disease, which is a parasitic disease with no known cure, and because Lenny is from southern Texas, where that is prevalent, that is their number one suspicion at this point. It could also be consequences of having heartworm, which she is actually now testing heartworm negative, but it could be something related to that. But for the Chagas disease, unfortunately, they lost his specimen, and it will be a few more weeks before I can get him down there and that blood drawn and sent away. So anyway... This did take a toll on Lenny. He did spend quite a few days in hiding, but I am happy to report that today he is doing very well and he is a happy little brindle boy.
going to work away at this. It's three degrees. We went from like minus 30 at like minus 15 to minus 30 Celsius for a good week or two. And now it's three degrees and raining and all of this snow is so wet and heavy. I've been working, Steve and I have been working away at it, but I've really got to start shoveling it off because I have a feeling that stuff is going to come down and then make more of a mess. And once it lands, it's like cement. So I'm up top now trying to get this down in that section over there slid. So I'm just going to kind of pick away at it. a good chunk of it down but it's been about a week and a half maybe two weeks since we've been able to use the bobcat to do the driveway because it was so cold that the tracks were frozen and what it was is that we didn't get the mud out of the tracks from the fall and so the mud froze and yeah, we just couldn't get them thawed out and it's finally, it's like four degrees today and finally got the bobcat going out of the carport. <laughs> but now the snow is like so uh, heavy. This is the track that's been the worst. It's been freezing up the most. Both were frozen for the last week and a half, but I'm also gonna, you know, it's thawing out so nicely. I'm gonna clean this stuff out too with, I don't know, find some tools to pick away at this. Oh yeah. I feel like it's kind of it's my fault because I was using the machine the most in the fall and like digging it around by my mill and it was so muddy down there. Track number two. Let's put you inside. Let's put you inside, darling. Come on. 
while I'm shoveling off the deck, Steve is doing this. There's a sleigh in that pile that I want to get out of there so that we can just run the bobcat along there at some point. That'll take a really long time. Hot? Yeah. I'll go around with this, the grass. You almost need a ladder. No, Some way. Okay, this is exercise. Yeah. Okay. I'll go around the bridge, I'll come back. Okay. We also have no power in the house right now. A power line, a power pole came down a few hours ago. So. <laughs> We're in the darkness. Luckily, it's not minus 30 right now like it was. I'm going to pick away this again because we got all the stuff off the roof. I shoveled most of that off. A good chunk of this stuff anyway. Steve wants me to keep this mound so that he can stand on it to clear the roof. But I'm just going to go and shovel away a little bit more. Steve's trying to get this. Kerosene lantern to burn. Well, I got the wick got black. I don't know. Might not work. Come back. That black will burn off. I don't know. Kind of looks like it's clearing. Power is still out. It is 4 p.m. So the power's been out for about six hours. And we've got our little kerosene lantern. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, nice, comfortable, and relaxing. How about a cup of tea? What should we have for supper? Soup. Canned soup. We can go out for supper. Let's see. Nice having the power. Ah. I know, remember that time we had our power go out in December, like maybe seven years ago. It was out for like three days. Four, I think. Three, I think. It was a long time. It was a long, it was a long time and it felt longer. But I just remember when the power came back on, all the lights came on and there was this buzzing and humming and beeping and it just felt so, I just wanted to shut all the lights off. <laughs> again and have the quietness and the stillness of no power. It's like the turn of the last century with kerosene and kerosene lantern. Yeah, those were the days. It was simple then. Oh baby. Oh baby there. Oh baby there. Here we are again, stuck in the thick of winter. It has been feeling like a full-time job lately, just managing the snow and trying to reduce the damage. 
This time of year is really just so different than the other seasons. The earth is quiet and still, and sometimes as hard as we fight it, we must also be quiet and still and just surrender to the flow of nature. I've certainly been sitting and eating a lot more, and while these things taste really lovely, sometimes I feel like I may as well just tape everything to my waist, because that's where it's going to go. But I've been trying to be a bit more consistent with exercise, but like many others out there, I find I get bored easily. So I'm thinking I'm due for a new and fun way to incorporate some exercise into my winter daily routine. But for now... I shall toss aside that shovel and have a little fun in life. What can I get you? Coke Zero, bubbly water, San Pellegrino, or a nice cold beer. It's a little early for a beer. So.